Genesis chapter 5, verse 21. We're going to begin here and read a few verses. The question and the title that I have for you this morning is, How's your walk with God? How's your walk with God? Genesis 5, verse 21. And Enoch lived sixty and five years and begat Methuselah. And Enoch walked with God after he begat Methuselah three hundred years and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Enoch were three hundred and sixty, uh, three hundred sixty and five years. And Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. Let's pray. Father, we do thank you that you've given us your word. And Lord, as we just start out with this uh, example of Enoch, and Lord, we'll be looking to a lot more of the things here, we just ask that you'd help us to have an understanding, open our hearts and minds to want to learn something this morning. We ask this in Christ's name, amen. You know, I am, I'm glad and, I'm, and I realize that there are a number of people here that do really want to walk with God. That's a blessing to work with uh, many that do want to know more about the Lord and how to know Him better and serve Him better. And so that's encouraging to me, and I hope that this message will help those of you who really want to. So what's the first thing you think of uh, that comes to your mind when you hear, when, I, when you heard that question, how's your walk with God? What do you think about when you think about your walk with God? Devotions. That's, a, that's normally what you think of. And in fact, maybe, you, maybe one of your parents have said one time, hey, uh, so how's your walk with God? And what they're meaning is, would you get out of your devotions and things like that? And that's not wrong to, to talk that way. But really, when we speak with, walking with God, it's a lot more than devotions. In fact, devotions is just the very, very, very beginning and I hope you'll see that as we go along. If you do a study of walking with God in the Bible, and I did a brief one because you can't really do everything in one, uh, one sermon here, you'll discover, discover that it involves a whole lot more than devotional time. In fact, we just read about Enoch. Enoch, uh, he walked with God for at least 300 years. And that wasn't meaning that he was having his personal daily devotions for 300 years. That's not exactly what he's talking about. We have a little more light on the subject uh, from Hebrews chapter 11, verse number 5. It says a little bit more about what it means to walk with God. He says, by faith Enoch was translated, that means that he was not, we found, read that in, in Genesis 5, he was translated that he should not see death and was not found because he had, God had translated him, for before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. That is the equivalent of what he was talking about back in Genesis chapter 5, walking with God. He had the testimony in Genesis 5 that he walked with God. He had the testimony in Hebrews 11 that he pleased God. So let me suggest to you then that walking with God is more a ton more than just having a few minutes in your Bible praying and reading, in, reading the Word of God. If you have reduced walking with God to a short devotional time, you've missed the whole point. That's not walking with God. That's where you begin your walk with God in the day. That's where you should begin. If you don't have your personal devotions, you really haven't even started getting up and walking with God. You've just walked without Him. You walked into a dark world without Him. And so what we need to see is that walking with God is, is a lifestyle. It's a relationship. You know, sometimes I go for a walk with my wife around the lake. And sometimes we go for a walk to walk, but every time we go for a walk, you know what we're doing? We're talking. And sometimes we just go for a walk so that we can talk. <laughs> the whole point of it is that there's some dialogue, there's some communication, we're spending time together, we're fellowshipping with each other, we're having input and listening and talking, and that's how it ought to be with the Lord. You got to be walking with God throughout each day 
talking to him, him talking to you, him guiding you, you looking to him for direction, and it just ought to be this give and take throughout the entire day. Not just that you're going to go have some devotions in the morning and say, okay, I'm spiritual now. I read my Bible and I prayed. But that's how we look at it sometimes. And we checked it, check it off, had my devotions. I'm spiritual, I'm walking with God. No, you didn't walk with God. Because what did you do the rest of the day? A lot of times what you did the rest of the day wasn't actually so good. And actually doesn't fall in line with the definitions that we see from, of the Bible of what walking with God really is. So we don't want to redefine what it means to walk with God to just saying, I read my Bible and I prayed a little bit. So let's see what walking with God really involves. All right? This is just a basic sermon. This is, a, this is an Andrew sermon. It's ordinary. It's nothing extraordinary. Andrew's like, I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> that's what you are, just ordinary. And that's okay. He wasn't here on Sunday. What does walking with God involve? Let me give you a few things. Number one, it involves light. Light. You say, walking with God, light? Yeah. Let's look at some scriptures. I'm going to have you turn to some. You, the first one you don't have to turn to, uh, but the next one I would like you to turn to. So I'd like you to get to Proverbs chapter 4, uh, and we're going to see something out of Proverbs chapter 4 in just a moment. But in the meantime, I'm going to read a very familiar verse to you. Psalm 119, verse 105, thy word is what? It's a lamp unto my feet. And a what? A light unto my path. What's the path? That's a place where you do what? It's a place that you walk. So here we go. We're seeing right away from the scripture a very familiar verse where walking with God involves light. It involves a lamp. And what is that light? It's the word of God. So you say, oh, so you just said walking with God's not just having your devotions. I didn't say it's not just, a, I said it's not exclusively and only having your devotions. But that does start with the word of God. It does start there. God is light. And to walk in him means that you're going to walk in light. And you've got to have the Bible to walk in light. You've got to spend some time with him in the word so that you know what he says, so that you can be in his presence and take his word and his commands and his precepts and his principles throughout the day and practice them and live them. A choice to ignore his word is a choice to walk, not in light, but in darkness. So I didn't have time to have my devotions today. Well, you didn't have time to walk in light. You didn't have time to walk with God. You made a choice that I am going to stay in darkness and I'm going to walk in darkness today because I'm not going to spend time with God, letting him renew my mind, letting him strengthen me, letting him change me. You know, it really is fun to serve God. The flesh says it's horrible. The flesh says, oh, don't do that. The flesh dreads taking up the cross, doesn't it? But God blesses when we take up our cross and follow him. You can't follow him without taking up the cross. So reading the Bible helps us to stay on the right path throughout the day. How are you going to know what the right path is if you haven't, again, taken, your time, taken the time to renew your mind with the Word of God and have the lamp? And so you read something in the Word of God and it changes you. What I just talked about the cross this morning, that's something I, I read about in my devotions this morning. It's not even in my outline. You know why? Because it just, it's something that stuck with me that God spoke to me about. Take up your cross and follow me. Take up the cross. It's not easy. But it's blessed. And you know, I'm even reminded, I was reading something last night, just reminded, you know, life is about being a servant. It's, it's about taking up the cross. It's like, wow, all these things. It's about not pampering myself and wanting to please myself. And I've, I've found and I've learned over the years that when I lose my life for his sake, I find it. 
I'm happy. But when I've ever pursued something and said, this is what I want to do, I'm not happy because I'm losing my life. I'm not really finding life that way. And you're not either. And we need to have to, we, we've got to constantly get help with this old flesh. And we need, we need light. We need it over and over again. Now, you're in Proverbs chapter 4. Let's look at verses 18 and 19. It says, but the path of the just is as the shining light. All right, so the path of the just, path is where you walk, right? And if you're just, it's going to be a shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. I like this. So if I'm in the light, my life is going to get brighter and brighter each step of the way. But I'm walking in the light just doing what's right. I'm going to have a brighter, happier, better life. You found that to be true. If you've tried to do what's right, you found that, hey, things went well. We'll see that a little bit later in the scripture, too. But you've also found that when you didn't do what's right and you didn't walk in the light and you were walking in darkness, things didn't go so well. You weren't so happy. You didn't find all that you were hoping that you would find there. So the next verse, verse 19 the way of the wicked, so we just talked about the path of the just. Now the way, the way, also, the word way also is talking about a path, a roadway. The way of the wicked is as darkness. They know not at what they stumble. So what happens when you walk in the darkness? What do you do? You, you trip, you stumble, you fall. So God's word helps my walk. I don't like falling down. You know, when I fall, I have a long way to go, right? Right, Austin? You even have a further way to go. It's like, woo. <laughs> it's like way up there, right? I get, I get, I, I, I feel pain just looking at the ground. It's like walking down that hill at, when it's all icy. I'm like, okay, I'm getting old now, and I'm, <laughs> I better be careful here. Oh, Yeah. I don't want to stumble. I don't want to fall. I don't want to crash and burn. I don't want to get hurt. And we do, but that's because we're walking in darkness. We're tripping and we're stumbling. It's not just that, oh, I didn't have the magical devotions that day. It's not that. It's that I didn't take what God's word was giving me and letting it shine in my path and take it with me throughout the day, guiding me and lighting it up and making, helping me to make right decisions. 1 John 1, 7 says, if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have what? We have fellowship one with another. So staying in the light keeps us in fellowship with God. And we need that all through the day, not just in the morning. So while I'm not saying that you need to read the Bible constantly throughout the day. What I'm saying is you need to let the, the, word, the truths of the word of God lighten your path throughout the entire day. That's what it means to walk with God. Get the idea that, again, out of your head that walking with God is just something you do in the morning during devotions. Now turn with me to Ephesians chapter number 5. Like I said, we're going to see several different passages. Ephesians chapter number 5. <clears throat> I don't know how much this is we're going to get through reading, but verses 8 through 21, there's a lot in here that talks about uh, light in in, in, in in darkness here, but the passage speaks about really walking in the light, walking as children of light. And as we read it, I want you to think, does this sound like something you do only in the morning or throughout the day? Okay, so we're reading beginning in verse number eight. For ye were sometimes darkness, that's before we were saved, but now are ye light in the Lord, walk as children of light. Now, does that sound like he's talking about having devotions only in the morning? Or is he talking about your lifestyle? Your lifestyle. Walking as children of light. Walking in the light. Walking with God. Walking in the truths of the scripture throughout the day. The Bible says there in verse number nine, for the fruit of the spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. Truth there again, that's the light. Proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. For it is even a shame to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. So he's talking about what we're even speaking about. We shouldn't even speak about evil things in such a way that we're rehearsing them and talking well about them. 
Good. So here you see we're stepping way outside the realm of just personal devotions now, aren't we? We're talking about how you live throughout the day. He said, but all things that are reproved are manifest by the light. For whatsoever doth make manifest is light. So we're supposed to be reproving the evil that's in the world that we come across throughout the day through the light that God has given to us and that we carry into this world. Verse 14, Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Redeeming the time. Just talking about devotions? Absolutely not. It's talking about making the best use of our time every day, throughout the day. Then he says, Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Don't be foolish. Know what God wants you to do. And be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. That's talking only about devotions? No. <laughs> That's talking about your life. You're not going to be drunk at any point in your life. You should be filled with the Spirit throughout the entire day, throughout your entire life. You should be, right? Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing, make a melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. All these things speak of our life. So walking as children of light, walking with God involves light. We need to get the light into our lives. We need to let it shine on our path. And we need to keep walking in that path throughout the entire day. That's walking with God. I don't I'm not going to say I don't care that you didn't have your devotions this morning. I do care if you had your devotions. I think that's a good start. But that's not it. That's just the beginning. Notice what Jesus said. I'll read it for you. In John 8, 12, it says, Then spake Jesus unto, again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness but she'll have the light of life. So Christ doesn't want us walking in darkness. He wants us to follow him. So if you're walking in light, you're following him. If you're walking in darkness, you're not following him. Live like him throughout the day. How did he live? Was he kind? He was kind to people. Are you kind to people? He was loving. He was thoughtful. He was a servant. He helped people. If he was on the, in, in the sports program, he'd be in the locker room thumping the head of the little seventh grader, right? Picking on all the, the young ones. Is that, is that what he would do? Don't think so. No, I know so. He wouldn't do that, no. He was holy. He was honest. He never cheated. He was thankful. He was pure in his conversation. Never said an ill word. Never lost his temper and got in the flesh. He was wise. He hated sin. So if our walk with God doesn't have an aversion to darkness and desire a life full of light, then we have the wrong concept of what a walk with God is. I'm convinced there's a lot of young people who've grown up in good Christian homes and good churches. You've been taught to read your Bible. You've been taught to pray. And you do those things. You do your little ditty. You're done. And then you go live how you want to live the rest of your day because that's what you've always done. You've never fully comprehended what walking with God really is. So, walking with God involves light. Secondly, it involves agreement. It involves agreement. Amos chapter 3, verse 3. Oh, another familiar verse. The question is, can two walk together except they be agreed? No, that's the answer. So to walk with God, then, means to be in agreement with him. So are you always in agreement with God? I think sometimes we agree that he's right, 
but we don't agree that we like what he likes. And we're not always in agreement hating what he hates. That means when he says something is wrong, we agree. So if he says, now that's not a good friend for you, and you say, well, he's never really spoken to me verbally, so how do I know that? Well, you know that because the Bible has spoken, and God has spoken through his word and says that we're not supposed to enter into the path of the wicked. And so when your friends are doing what's wrong, he's already told you, don't go in the path with them. Avoid it, pass not by it, right? Turn away. We need to get away from those things. He's already told us those things. He's already probably spoken to you through your parents, too. Hey, I don't want you hanging around so-and-so. How many of you have ever heard that growing up, right? Mom and Dad said, hey, now that one, I'm not saying they're bad, but they're not a good influence on you. Those, you two together is not really the best. Come on, be honest, right? If you didn't hear it, you probably should have. And if you didn't hear it, it was probably all the other parents saying to their kids a warning about you. So when God says, hey, that's not the right friend, I'm not going to walk in the light. I'm not going to walk with them because I'm going to be in agreement with God. I'm going to walk with God instead. When God said, hey, what about that music? Well, yeah, I do. I listen to hymns. Those are good. But there's just this little song over here that's just a little catchy. It's just, you know, it's nothing really, really bad. It's just a little, you know, it's just, I like that one. Well, you know, that one turns into more than just that one. You know that. Hmm. How about dress? You know what you're supposed to wear, what you're not supposed to wear. But I'm not in agreement. That's just what they think. Who's they? You know, you can find any, you can find someone to agree with. You know, some of you getting ready to graduate from Bible college. It's like, yes. And you're looking for a place to go serve. Oh, here's a Christian school. Yes. Oh, yes. And they don't have the same standards. I can listen to the music I always wanted to. I can wear the clothes I've always wanted to. And it's okay because the church and the school says it's okay. What does God say? Do you want to walk with God or you just want someone else to stamp approval on what you wanted to do? I don't know about you, but I would rather just make sure I'm trying to walk with God and be careful and not just find what, a, a way to do what I want to do. Because I, I've had a few years of experience doing what I want to do, and it doesn't always work out really well in the end. I would imagine I'm twice the age of most everybody in here, at least. <laughs> and then some, with some of them. Uh, Ooh, with the younger ones, I'm probably at least three times. Wow, that's sorry. But it all, not only means that we're to agree with when he says something's wrong that we agree, but it also means that when he says something is right that we agree. And we're going to say, okay, you want me to do this? I will do this. I will start giving out more tracts. I will start being a help. I will start being obedient to my parents, whatever it is. If I want to walk with God, I've got to agree with him. So when I hear something from my personal devotions or when I hear something from, from church, I come to chapel, I hear something in family devotions, then I'm supposed to be in agreement with that. And I find that oftentimes my life doesn't always want to be in agreement. And I've got to, if I want to walk with God, then I've got to make that adjustment. I've got to be in agreement. Just because you read your Bible and prayed for a few minutes this morning doesn't mean that you're actually in agreement walking with him. You ever read something and God spoke to you and you didn't want to do it and you didn't want to take care of it? And that went on for a while? Well, I've been having my devotions. Yeah, but you haven't been walking with God. Well, no, I, have, I am walking with God. I have my devotions. You haven't been walking with God because you've been saying no. You haven't been in agreement with God. So you must translate 
this idea into your thought processes of what God says. You must learn to judge what's right and wrong every day throughout the day. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 2.15, He that is spiritual judgeth all things. Heard I wasn't supposed to judge. No, this is a good type of judgment. I'm, we're not talking about going around, you know, you know, condemning everybody, but this is the type of judgment. I'm passing judgment. Is this a good thing to say or a bad thing to say? Is this a good place to go or a bad place to go? What does God say? What does he want me to do? And as you think that way, throughout the day, you're always judging, making these discernments through his word and what he would want you to do. You are walking with God. Not that complicated. Just, this is simple nuts and bolts. Ordinary Andrew sermon. So agree, agreeing with God also involves something else, though, as we're talking about being in agreement. It, in, it in, involves confessing our sin. So that when I hear something from his word, or I come across something in my life, and I'm contrary to what God said, and I've gone against what God said, to be in agreement then, I must confess that sin. In fact, the word confess means to acknowledge. It, it, it implies agreement with God. So if we confess our sins, if I acknowledge my sin, if I'm in agreement with God about my sin, then he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You have to agree with God about what's right and wrong. And then when your ways are contrary, you must change your mind and change your ways. We find that in Proverbs chapter 28, verse 13. He that covereth his sins shall not, what? Prosper. Now, why are you covering your sins? Because you're not in agreement with God that you should change them. You're not in agreement that they're wrong. And even if you know they're wrong, you're still not in agreement that you're going to change and, and amend your ways. So he that cover the sin, sin shall not prosper, but whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. I don't know about you, but I need mercy, I want mercy, and mercy is pretty good. It involves light, walking with God. It involves agreement. But agreeing isn't enough. It leads us to our next point. It involves obedience. Obedience. So I should agree with what God says, but then I must do what he says. Now I want you to turn with me to Deuteronomy chapter number 5. Deuteronomy chapter number 5. <clears throat> Verse number 33. The Bible says here, Ye shall walk in all the ways which the Lord your God hath commanded you, that ye may live, and that it may be, what's those next three words? Well with you. I don't know about you, but I like it when things go well with me. I want it to go well with me. All right, so, but don't, don't miss the point here. Ye shall walk in the way, all the ways, not some of them, all the ways which the Lord your God hath commanded you, that ye may live and that, ye may, that it may be well with you, and that ye may prolong your days in the land which ye shall possess. So God's blessing is upon our lives when we walk with him, when we walk in all the ways, not just the ways that are pleasing to us, not just the times where it's convenient or comfortable, but all the ways. What about those hard ones? All the ways. And when we do all those things and, and we, we follow the Lord, then it will be well with us. Now, isn't that what we wanted in the first place? But instead, we say, well, I want it to be well with me. I'm going to go seeking the pleasures of sin. I want to go my own way. And the own way, your own way never ends well. It doesn't. There is a way which seemeth right unto a man. But the end thereof are the ways of death. That's the, that's the end. And we always forget that. But when we know the word and we study the word and we keep reading the word and we keep reminding ourselves of the word, then when those things come into our, 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 our these these situations come across our path, and we go, oh, yeah, 
I just read God, the Holy Spirit brings it back to our remembrance. Yeah, you should remember this because that's your way and that's not going to end well. You go, oh, yeah. So when you come to chapel and part of walking with God, then you come to chapel with an open heart, looking to see what God says. And when God speaks to you, you say, oh, I need to do something about that. It's not just coming forward. That, that's, that's part of it. Fine. Come forward and you pray. But then you get up and you go and say, I'm going to put this into practice now and I'm going to make the change that God has spoken to me about. And I'm not going to forget about it. I'm going to keep praying about this. I'm going to put it on my, my, um, my daily prayer list. I've got this problem. I'm going to keep praying over it so that God helps me with it. And we see God working in us and through us. So there's no walking with God when we're going against his commandments. Make sense? So let, let's just, okay, everyone's a student here, right? So um, let's just make it practical w w with some everyday example, okay? God tells us to obey our spiritual authorities. Is that correct or incorrect? That's correct. Okay, so, um, you know, for those of you who are still of under age, you know, that means you are under your parents' authority. And you, yeah, and I can't wait. I'm getting closer to be out from under my parents. Okay, you'll get over it. Um, so you're still under your, so you're under your parents' authority. You're under a pastor. You're under pastoral authority. You, you're in school, so you're, you're under the authority of the, uh, of the authorities <laughs> in the school, right? That makes sense. Hebrews 13, verse 17, you know the verse, but let's think about it. Obey them, this is God commanding, obey them that have the rule over you and submit yourselves. For they watch for your souls as they that must give account, that they may do it with joy and not with grief, for that is unprofitable for you. So if you, if you disobey the rules, just say for the school, you disobey the rules for the school set up by your th spiritual authority, are you obeying God? Yes or no? No. If you're not obeying God, are you walking with God? No. It's that simple. The school has, the college has rules for dating. You can walk here, you can't walk here. You can go here, you can't go there. You can be with someone here, but you can't be with someone, there. whatever it is. The, 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 the school, you know, the high school has rules for how you, how you conduct yourself in the classroom, how you conduct yourself in the hallways. But when no one's looking around, hey, I'm just going to, you know, I'm just, it's just one little, it's just, and we make allowances for ourselves. But you don't understand, you don't realize, you say, I'm just, I, you know, it's just a rule. Yeah, in of, of, of some rules, I understand, are not like, earth-shattering moral rules, but they are guidelines that have been established by our spiritual authorities, and when we are, have a bad attitude towards them and we disregard them, we start making allowances toward it, uh, you know, to do things that are not right. We are disobeying God, and when we're disobeying God, we're not walking with Him. So you can say, I have my devotions this morning. Great. Did you keep the rules? <laughs> So what if I slept in? So what if lights out? What's that? You know, yeah, I went somewhere I'm not supposed to, but you know, you're not walking with God. Well, but I had to my devotion. I go soul winning. I don't care. You're not walking with God. And I'm not walking with God if I'm disregarding what God says about something. I can get up here and preach. And God might be saying to me to do something. I don't feel like doing it. I can be preaching. Yeah, I'm giving the word. But if I'm not doing what God says to do, am I walking with God? No. So this applies for all of us. So when you purposely disregard authority, you're no longer walking with God. You're walking in darkness. What happens when you walk in darkness? You stumble. Will it be well with you? When you're not walking with God? No. Now, I'll just read it for you. I was going to have you turn there. But Jeremiah chapter 7, verse 23, says something very similar. It says, but this thing commanded I them, 
saying, obey my voice, and I will be your God, and ye shall be my people. And ye shall, and ye will, and, and walk ye in all the ways which I have commanded you. So walk ye in all the ways which I have commanded you, that it may be well unto you. Do you get the idea that God wants us to have a good life? That he wants it to go well for us? But I want to go here. Go back to those who are graduating. I want to go here and I want to do this. Do you want it to go well with you? Obey all of God's commands. Walk in the light. Follow his precepts. And it will go well with you. Ignore that, and you ignore the light of God's word and what he's shed on it, then you're going to walk in darkness. It might be your way, but you will stumble and you will fall, and the end thereof are the ways of death. But he wants things to go well with us. Psalm, turn with me to Psalm 119. Contrary to popular belief, God wants you to be happy. So I'm not very happy. The reason we're not very happy is because we're not following what he says. We're not walking with him. When we walk with him, we're happy. And if the things of God and the ways of God don't make you happy, you are not walking with him. Bottom line. Psalm 119, verses 1 through 3. Blessed, that's the first word there. The word blessed means happy, okay? Blessed or happy are the undefiled in the way who do what? Who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed, happy again, are they that keep his testimonies, okay? You're not just walking, but you're keeping them. That's part of the walking. And that seek him with the whole heart. So it's not just having a little devotional time, but it's seeking him in his ways and walking in his ways. Verse 3, they also do no iniquity, they walk in his ways. So, to be happy, the happy ones are the ones who walk in God's ways. Pretty simple. Let me give you the fourth and final point. So, what does it involve? Walking with God. Light, agreement, obedience. Let me give you another one, number four, good deeds. Good deeds. You say, good deeds? Yeah. Uh, it's not just enough for us to refrain from sin. He wants us to do some good along the way. Okay? And that's where it actually does get fun. It, it gets fun to... Isn't it fun to do nice things for other people? You know it's true, but we have this aversion sometimes of doing nice things for other people because we want nice things done for ourselves. And then we're disappointed when people don't do the nice things for us. So Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10. We all know Ephesians 2, 8, and 9. We use those in, when we quote for uh, salvation. You know, we're not saved by works. Yeah, but once you get saved, you are saved to do works. So Ephesians 2, 10, it says, For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God before, hath before ordained that we should walk in them. So God made us to do good works. That we should walk in them. Walk in what? Walk in the good work. So part of walking with God is doing good things. Not to get saved, but because we are saved. Because he's created us to do those things. And if we're walking with God, our steps are going to lead us to do good things everywhere we go. Around the people that we meet. Whether they're lost or whether they're saved. Walking with God implies that we have manners. Because that's just being good. It implies that we're going to be polite. It implies that we're going to avoid saying cruel things to other people. You know, some sarcasm, let me say it this, rephrase it. A lot of sarcasm is way out of line. So yeah, but we're just like sarcastic around here. Yeah, and a lot of the sarcasm around here is way out of line. It's not Christian. Yeah, but you know, everyone's sarcastic. I'm sarcastic. But we have to be careful that it doesn't cross that line. If we're going to do good works, we're going to lend a helping hand. We're going to put others first. 
We're going to compliment people. We're going to pass out tracts to the lost. We're going to encourage someone when they're down instead of seeing someone having a bad day and saying, what's wrong with you, man? You just helped them a lot, didn't you? What's wrong with you? That's how you want to be treated when you're having a bad day? No, I want everyone to leave me alone. They will. <laughs> oh, yeah. So we'll do good things when we're walking with God. Why? Because we're submitted to the Holy Spirit. Galatians 5, 16. This I say, then walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Walking with God means taking the steps that the Holy Spirit will lead us to take throughout the day. That means we're listening to that still, small voice when he prompts us, when he reminds us of his word. And the spirit of truth, when he's come, he will guide you into all truth. Which brings us right back to the word of God then, doesn't it? It starts by walking in the light. It also starts by doing good deeds. It starts by walking in the spirit who guides us through the word. So it's not merely having devotions, no. That's where it starts, but it must continue throughout the day. When you leave the prayer closet each morning, remember that you're just starting your walk with God. Remember that. When you get done, when you close that Bible, you've said your amen to your prayer, you've just started your walk with God. Take every step in the light. Strive to be in agreement with God. Determine to obey all that he says. And let your walk lead you to perform and do many good deeds throughout the day. Walking implies movement, doesn't it? So let's move with the Lord throughout every day. Walking implies direction. So walk with God, not away from him. I started with a question, I'll end with a question. How's your walk with God? I'm not asking how your devotions are. How's your walk with God? How have your devotions actually changed how you live? Let's bow our heads and close our eyes.